What's up, YouTube? This is Barnon11970. Thank you for watching my video. All right, guys, today I want to talk about the average person out in the world. The problem I am seeing, because on my Facebook or in real life when I'm talking to friends and coworkers and other people trying to deliver them truthful information, is the average person, if something sounds weird, they will automatically dismiss it. And to me, I hope you watch this with somebody that is either on the fence about all this stuff or doesn't really believe in it. Because when somebody dismisses something because it sounds strange or it sounds weird or it sounds unfamiliar, I can understand that somebody will say, oh, that's crazy or that doesn't make sense. And I can understand why people would even say, oh, I don't believe it. But this is what you should challenge these people to do. Challenge them to at least, instead of just blindly accepting what you're told or blindly dismissing something because you don't agree with it or believe in it, to at least verify something. So at least you can go from, I don't believe that, or it sounds good, to I know. Now you can't always find every bit of information. Unfortunately, governments are corrupt. We all pretty much know this at this point. Even the people don't believe in the conspiracies can definitely accept the fact that governments are corrupt. Now, corrupt governments are only in power because we, the people, are giving them the consent, the consent through our silence. In other words, we allow them to continue to do it, and we keep waiting for some hero to come along and fix the problem. And that's what governments are counting on. They want you to sit there and hope some new politician who's going to say everything that you want to hear and say all these wonderful things and get everybody all pumped up and end up not doing anything to help you. We've seen this time and time and time again. And they're counting on you to sit there and want that to happen and believe that your vote actually does matter. And you wonder why, even if the very person that you loved hearing what they said and loved what they stood for, even if they got into power, you haven't noticed all of a sudden all the things they promised to you just don't happen or don't happen the way they promised. I mean, look at Obama's original 2008 campaign. You know, change. How much has changed? Well, how much has changed for the better? So, I mean, technically he did keep his promise. He, he said that there would be change and there's definitely change. If you look in your pocket, that's pretty much all you, most people like you and I pretty much have is change. So I guess uh, be careful what you wish for, you might get it. And he didn't technically ever say good change. So he probably did hold this promise. But the problem with the, I find with the average person out there is most people have a wait and see mentality. And you see it all the time when there's a snowstorm coming or a hurricane, or some kind of event where people even have a time to plan. They wait until the last minute to get things like gasoline for their car, for um, food, groceries, blankets, light bulbs, batteries. People tend to wait to the last minute. And that's a very dangerous way to live. And I'm not one of those doom and gloom people that says, oh, you know, there's gonna be a comet that hits the earth and we're all gonna die. But that doesn't mean people cannot be injured by not being prepared. If you're a person who lives day by day and doesn't have a fireplace and relies on oil or, let's say, electricity for their heat, if you have a week's worth of time where you're unable to get oil because maybe you're snowed in and the roads are closed or your electricity goes out because a tree landed on the power line and they can't get it to it for a week or two, people can die. So it doesn't have to be doom and gloom scenarios for people to be injured. It's all about being prepared for things before they happen. And the average person overreacts at the last second when it's too late. I mean, the mentality of that, the best way to describe it is a person that says they don't want fire insurance because they don't want to spend the money and they don't think it's going to be needed. And obviously their house isn't on fire. And then one day they wake up, they see their house ablaze, and then they call the insurance company and try and order fire insurance. It does not you no good at that point, and you're not even going to get it. So until people start thinking for themselves, 
until people start realizing that you cannot wait for others to save you. There's an old expression that so holds true. And it may not be for everybody's country, but it was definitely main, a mainstay here. United we stand, divided we fall. The way the Ponzi schemes work in all governments throughout the world is for them to be effective and for them to function, they need participants. The more participants, the longer it goes and the more wealth acquired at the top of that scheme. The people at the bottom never succeed. So until we get the people to realize that governments run through our consent, and even if we don't dispute it and we're silent about it, that's still consenting because you're not disputing it. When we realize that we have the power, we have the control, and we can decide not to do it anymore and find a better way, then we can make change. And it can happen instantly. Prime example, let's say uh, a phone company. I won't mention any because I don't want to give anybody free advertisement. But let's say a phone company that is very popular and millions of people have the phone company service. And you get a message tomorrow that starting next Friday, your rates will go up triple. Your, you, your text messages will be charged 10 cents per text. Your internet service will only be open for an hour unless you want to pay extra. And they're only ex, um, accepting cash delivery for payments only. Now, let me ask you something. How quickly do you think they would change their mind or go out of business if people said, instead of, okay, I guess I have no choice, I'm going to do it, they say, well, you know what? I'm going to another company. I'm canceling my service. Do you think they wouldn't change in an instant? Or do you think they wouldn't go out of business? They are relying on people to continue to work to create what's called money and give it away to governments to survive. You stop giving them your hard-earned money and start realizing that that's the definition of slavery. You are working to pay off debts. The debts are created from a system where they take money out of thin air. Well, they call it money. It's a fiat system. It's based on nothing. It's backed by nothing. They lend it out to the general public where they use no labor to get it. They just called up on a phone and said, hey, Federal Reserve, I need about, I'm a bank, I'm a major bank, and I need $150 billion in my account. Oh, okay, hold on. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, I'm looking at my computer screen, $150 billion in my account. Thank you very much. They take that hard-earned work that they did, that five-minute phone call, they take that digital dollars that they got from the Federal Reserve, which is a private-owned bank, and they write checks to people who borrow that money. Now, there's a price to pay for that because you have to not only repay it with real money or real fiat dollars or euros or wherever you are in the world, but you have to pay interest. So they're handing you nothing because when you get a loan from a bank, they don't just push over a bunch of gold. They don't even push over a bunch of dollars or euros. They write you a check or they automatically put some digital numbers in your account. So they have given you nothing. And in return, you have to work your labor to create enough dollars, euros, or whatever your currency is to be able to use that to pay back their invisible loan plus interest. Now, just imagine if people all of a sudden had an aha moment and said, wait a minute. When you put it that way, that doesn't sound fair. It doesn't seem right. Why am I doing this? And you decide to not do it anymore and everybody stops doing it. Well, guess what? They either change or they go under. There is a reason why there are no people that you can find jogging out on the street with a cassette player. Why? Because it's been replaced with CD players, then replaced with MP3 players, and that will be replaced by something else in the future. 
there's a reason why the majority of people do not have betas or VHSs anymore. Some people do, but the average person has a DVD player or a Blu-ray player or what will be next. There's a reason why the majority of people don't have rotary phones while they've been replaced. See where I'm getting? When you come up with a new and better system and people decide the old system is no longer functional and no longer usable, you have to change with the times. Just think of your computer. Your computer is only good if it's updated. No one has a com an Apple computer from 1985 and is still using it today. It would no longer function. So I don't care how great Apple thinks they are. If that was the only product they were willing to sell, if no one's buying it, they're not making any money, there goes their business. There goes the corporation. Now, the United States is a corporation. Canada is a corporation. Australia is a corporation. Japan is a corporation. All these countries are corporations. They're part of a humongous Ponzi scheme where very few people profit off of the labor of people. They are a business. You take away their business, you stop purchasing their product, and things will change. But it has to be the majority of people to do it. Can't be one or two, can't be one or two thousand, it can't even be one or two million. When you get 30, 40, 50 percent of the population all of a sudden saying, we're not falling for your scheme anymore, we're not participating, we no longer consent. They no longer have the ability to continue. And when you think your vote counts, you are consenting to the government that it's okay to go overseas and kill a bunch of people and steal their, their property, basically, and steal their resources and create cheap labor. You're consenting to that. And most people don't want to know about it. That's why the news doesn't talk about it. And the news is owned by corporations. I want people to get this, and I will spend the rest of my life making videos like this. Some people may be sick of it. Well, until the system has changed, why should I give up? Because a few might not like hearing the same thing over and over again. Notice no one's talking about how we need to stop buying VCRs and cassette players. And why no one's talking about, oh, you know, 13-inch black and white TVs, you know, we need to get rid of them. No one has them anymore. There's a reason for that. There should be a reason why we're not in gas-driven cars that also use oil. It's killing our system because it's not unlimited resources. And we have to dig deeper and deeper, causing more and more problems with this planet. And if we continue on that path, I'm not going to say it's going to be doom and gloom and we're all dying from it, but it's not improving the quality of our lives when they spill oil in the ocean and they put all this chemicals into the air. Because if you research history, there have been many of people who have had different ideas and different inventions that could have put, a, put us on a much different path. Just look at people like Nikolai Tesla, who basically is the father of wireless in, wireless technology, and that was back in the 1800s. Governments buy up patents and they put them away so you never see the light of day. Think about that. They have cures for cancer. Never see the light of day. Why? Because medicine is another business. They need customers. If you're well, <laughs> they're not making money off of you. And that's why I talk about things like sun gazing. And if you've never heard of sun gazing before, I highly recommend you look at one of my videos where I show me sun gazing for 25 minutes. I'm actually up to 38 minutes at this point. And please do not sun gaze if you don't know what it is because you will damage yourself. Watch my videos or watch other people's videos. If you're dumb enough to just look at the sun at any time, you're going to damage your eyes and, and you deserve that. So check into it. But there are many different ways, even cannabis oil has been said to help cure cancer. They won't talk about that stuff. They don't want you better. They want you to be able to live with a problem for the rest of your life so they can earn unlimited funds off of you. And then they'll have things like Obamacare, 
where basically it's getting millions of people who once didn't have insurance to all of a sudden trying to pump money into the system. That's all it is. It's not health. It's not about health. It's about getting people to pay more money into the system. So I'm going to keep this video under 20 minutes. I always appreciate everybody that takes the time and effort to listen to my videos, to share them and like them. It means a lot to me. I don't ask for, for anything from people other than to spread the information because if we all decide it's time to stop what they're doing and stop agreeing to it, and you don't have to say, yes, I agree to actually agree to something. If you say nothing, you're consenting. It's time to stop looking the other way. And it's also time to stop dismissing something because it sounds strange. Research it. Verify it. So at least at the very least, you could find out if somebody made an honest mistake. Or to actually have the confidence in saying, I went from it sounds right to I know it's right. Or that sounded wrong to I know it's wrong. Do it for your own self. Stop being a follower. And that includes listening to anybody. It's nothing wrong with listening to people. But get ideas from different people. Learn. Study. Expand your mind. Doesn't mean you're going to get everything right. But it definitely reduces the amount of times you're just led. Because the people that are doing the leading are not bringing us anywhere better. Keep that in mind the next time you listen to some professional with a suit and tie and a Harvard degree telling you what you need to do. This is Chris, Bar None 11970, signing out and thanking you all for taking the time to watch my video. Peace.